Hello everybody, this is Craig from Squashbox Theatre. Every year around the middle of June, the Cornish town of Redruth celebrates Murdoch Day in honour of its most famous citizen, the inventor and engineer William Murdoch. This year, because of one thing and another, Murdoch Day cannot go ahead as planned, but that doesn't stop us celebrating and remembering this great man. So I present to you the life of William Murdoch in ten chapters. William Murdoch, Cornish hero, was born in Ayrshire in Scotland in 1754. Wait, wait a minute, Scotland? Yes, one of Cornwall's most famous inventors and proud citizen of Red Ruth was actually born in Scotland. Even as a child, Murdoch showed glimpses of the engineering genius he was to become. For example, at the age of nine, he built a wooden horse on wheels that was propelled along by hand cranks. He also carried out experiments in a cave near his home, trying to produce gas from coal using an old copper kettle. Ow! In 1777, at the age of 23, William Murdoch walked all the way from Scotland to Birmingham in search of engineering work. That's 266 miles! Do you know how long it takes to walk 266 miles? Four days! Yeah, I tried it. I walked from my home in Cornwall all the way to Reading. It took me four days! I didn't really. The reason Murdoch walked all the way to Birmingham was to try and get work at the engineering firm of Bolton and Watt, owned coincidentally by the engineers Matthew Bolton and James Watt. At the interview, Bolton and Watt noticed Murdoch's rather unusual hat. It seemed strangely heavy and solid. Your hat, uh, what is it made of? Timber, replied Murdoch. I made it myself, sir, on a lathe of my own contriving. They were so impressed with a wooden hat, they hired him. In 1779, Bolton and Watt sent Murdoch to Red Ruth in Cornwall as a senior engineer, responsible for the building, maintenance and repair of Bolton and Watt engines. Murdoch was just 25 years old. We sent you to Cornwall. Y yes, Cornwall. It's that bit that sticks out at the bottom. Murdoch's job maintaining and repairing the engines was vitally important. The engines pumped water from the mines, so the more efficient the engine, the more tin could be extracted, and the more tin could be extracted, the more money could be made. Murdoch was kept very busy travelling all over the area, repairing and improving the performance of the engines under his care. He often worked days on end without rest. In 1782, Matthew Bolton wrote, We want more Murdoch's. For of all others, he is the most active man and the best engine erector I ever saw. When I look at the work done, it astonishes me and is entirely owing to the spirit and activity of Murdoch, who has not gone to bed for three nights. About this time, Murdoch found that the CH at the end of his name caused problems for the people around him. Thank you, Mr. Murdoch. Murdoch? Is it? Murdoch. Murder. Murder. Uh, I, no, I'm not getting it, I'm afraid. What's that? As if it had a K on it. Murdoch. But well, why don't you spell it like that then? So, to avoid confusion, he often spelt his name with a CK at the end. Murdoch. Murdoch made many improvements to the basic steam engine design used by Bolton and Watt, including groundbreaking inventions such as the D-slide valve and the sun and planet gear. Now, I'm no engineer, but I'll do my best to explain how they worked and why they were so revolutionary. The D-slide valve is named after the hollow central D-section piston. <laughs> most important invention of the time. The sun and planet gear was slightly different, it worked like this. Hence, the sun and planet gear. In 1780, Murdoch moved into a house in Cross Street near the centre of Red Ruth, now known as Murdoch House. He established a foundry and a workshop, and used his spare time to work on his own inventions and experiments, mainly the idea of a steam carriage or road locomotive. In 1784, Murdoch built a working model of his steam carriage, which he set to run around his living room in his house in Red Ruth. This is the first recorded example in Great Britain of a man-made machine moving around completely under its own power. 
One night, so the story goes, Murdoch decided to test his carriage outside on the open road. But it was faster than he expected, and he couldn't keep up with it. He soon met a terrified local vicar who had seen the carriage coming down the road towards him and thought it was the devil coming to get him. Murdoch continued to work on his steam carriage, and in 1795, he showed it off at the King's Head Hotel in Truro. This was the first public demonstration in Britain of steam locomotion in action. Unfortunately, Murdoch's employers, James Watt and Matthew Bolton, were not very encouraging of his experiments in steam locomotion, telling him that there was no future in such an idea. And without their support, Murdoch was unable to develop his invention further. There is evidence to suggest that Murdoch actually built a full-size steam carriage in 1794, although nothing now remains of it. This was known as Murdoch's Flyer and is believed to be the first road-going steam-powered vehicle in Britain. In 1797, a new neighbour moved next door to William Murdoch in Red Ruth, a certain Richard Trevithick, who a few years later developed his own commercial steam engine. So, uh, tell me again, William, how, how exactly does this steam engine of yours work? Coincidence? I think not. But if you think that's all that William Murdoch invented, oh no, there's a lot more. The first rudimentary air conditioning system, a compressed air doorbell, a gravity-fed piped hot water system for Leamington Spa baths, a steam gun which fired three centimetre lead bullets, a pneumatic message system which worked by using compressed air to propel a message in a cylinder through a tube. Yeah, like you see in cartoons. A machine for drilling wooden pipes, further improved into a machine for drilling stone pipes, the oscillating cylinder steam engine, a steam cannon which could knock down a wall, a rotary marine engine for steamboats, the discovery of iron cement, a new way to create dyes for paints and fabrics, a machine to grind and compress peat moss under great pressure to produce a material with resemblance to finest jet. The invention for which Murdoch is probably best known is the use of gas lighting as a replacement for oil. In 1795, he used heated coals to pipe gas through a four-foot iron tube before sending it through an old gun barrel and igniting it to produce light. By 1795, he succeeded in lighting his home with coal gas, meaning that his house in Red Ruth was the first domestic residence ever to be lit by gaslight. Gas flames were safer and cheaper than candles and had a huge impact on industry, lengthening the working day by hours. The first factory to be fully lit by gas was the Phillips and Lee Cotton Mill in Manchester in 1805. In 1799, William Murdoch returned to Birmingham and lived and worked there until his death in 1839. Initially, much of Murdoch's reputation as an inventor was obscured by Bolton and Watt, who unfairly gained credit for many of Murdoch's ideas. But gradually, Murdoch's genius is being rediscovered, and today he rightly takes his place amongst the world's greatest engineers and inventors. Murdoch's Flyer, a working replica, was actually built in 2007, demonstrating that a full-size version certainly would have been possible in Murdoch's day. So although Murdoch Day will not take place this year in the streets of Red Ruth, that doesn't stop us remembering and celebrating the life and legacy of William Murdoch, inventor, engineer, an honorary Cornishman. This is Craig, signing off.